Hello and welcome to The Drum. I'm Steve Kinane. Our panel tonight, Fran Kelly, host of Radio National Breakfast, Michael Gleeson from Hawker Britain and former New South Wales Liberal leader Kerry Chikorovsky. Well, the betting odds on Julia Gillard forming a minority government narrowed today with the news that Labor was ahead in the Tasmanian seat of Denison. If they stay ahead in that seat and nothing else swings around, that would give the Coalition and Labor both 73 seats each, with three independents and one Green. The ABC's election analyst, Anthony Green, joins us now. Anthony, yesterday Andrew Wilkie was ahead and looked like he, he might win, Denison. What's changed today? Well, actually, yesterday nobody had the faintest idea what the result was. Today they've got a better idea. That's the difference. Look, what happened today was the Electoral Commission started to recount all the votes because the contest is between Labor and Wilkie, not between Labor and Liberal. And this morning when they started to release those figures booth by booth, um, nobody quite knew what they were. And they came fed into the ABC computer system and the ABC computer system gave it away to Labor. Now, I was in a car travelling from Canberra at the time, so nobody could talk to me and find out what this meant. And so when I got back to Sydney, discovered everyone was running around saying, ABC computer has given the seat away. It can't be given away yet. I've been looking at it booth by booth now I've had the chance. It's been hovering around 50, 51 either way. What you've got in Denison is an electorate in two halves. The northern half is, is a city called Glenorchy City Council. It's a solid Labor Party area and the swing to Wilkie is about 5%. The southern half of the electorate is Hobart City Council and the swing is 25%. The election, the Denison swing goes up and down depending on where the, that swing is coming from in the latest booth count. So we're going to have to wait. I think Labor is looking stronger than it was because this, oh, clearly Wilkie hasn't got quite as many preferences as some people, as some of us thought on the night. Um, but we've still got all the Sandy Bay area, which is where the swing will be biggest still to come. So um, the advantage Labor got if has, if it's only slightly behind, Wilkie don't, won't don't do well with postal and absent votes. Mm -hmm. So that's the advantage they have. I still say it's too close to call, but Labor would be slightly favoured. But you can't give it away yet. Andy, let's talk about the seat of Hasluck in WA. You say that the Coalition needs this seat if they are to form government. Where's that at today? Well, it was 366 votes on election night, and last time I looked it was 378. Um, all they're really doing at this stage is reprocessing and check counting votes they've already counted. They're just clarifying the figure. There isn't a significant increase in votes until the first batches of postals and the first batches of absent votes are counted. The absent votes I don't think will come in until Tuesday or Wednesday. They might have done some postals today, maybe not too many, but uh, I think it'll be the end of the week before we really get a good handle on, um, on uh, has like the thing also people talk about trends in postals and trends in absent votes there's no such thing as a trend in postal and absent votes these votes always come back in bundles there are always groups of them for you know absent votes from one electorate from a different electorate so the pattern in the bundles is different there isn't really a trend you really need to know what was counted so uh, I think you'll re need to wait towards the end of the week before we've got a good handle on has like Andy, besides Hasluck and Denison, there's uh, three other seats that are in doubt. Let's run through them. First, uh, Arch Bevis' seat of Brisbane. I haven't seen much, um, anything to indicate there's a narrowing of the result there. I think it, the lead was over eight or 900, and I think that's rather hard to turn around on postals and absence. Boothby in South Australia? Again, there was a significant lead there, and it's a sitting Liberal MP. I'd be surprised if the Labor Party can turn around the Liberal Party lead in that seat, because it's not a sitting, sitting Labor's member. Now, what about Dunkley? Because uh, yesterday that wasn't in doubt, and today it is. What's changed there? I'm not exactly sure what's changed there, but sometime today something was added, maybe a correction, maybe some new votes, which narrowed the lead, and it became doubtful again. It's down to about 384. Um, I think people shouldn't get too excited about these, the counting at this stage. There's a lot of checking to be done, um, but certainly Dunkley is closer than it appeared on election night, and um, I can't tell you why it's closer. And Anthony, everyone's keen to lock in the seat count, because, particularly because of the negotiations, it's so close. But there's a long, there could be a long way to play on this. I mean, I remember last time McEwen, you know, there was a court challenge. It took over a month, I think, for McEwen. Are you confident that, say, seats like McEwen or uh, a seat like Lindsay or Karangamite, that, uh, that something won't happen in the counting or there can't, wouldn't, won't be a shock in the, the big bag of postal votes or something to change that? The, the thing in McEwen was the first count was 12 votes. There, there, are, there aren't any electorates, unless how's luck ends up that way. There's no seats in the current count which I think are going to end up at 10 or 12 votes. Um, it's unusual for a seat to be decided by less than 100 votes. And unless it's decided by less than 100 votes, 
then it's not really going to come under challenge from the courts. And Andy, when um, we look at your computer, you're counting uh, Tony Crook, the WA National, as a coalition uh, member? Well, I am. If the National Party of Western Australia or Mr Crook would like to write to the ABC <laughs> and tell us that they are not part of the Federal National Party, we will stop doing so. And I'm sure if they write and tell us, then everybody in Australia will hear that message. <laughs> Anthony, what about the two-party preferred vote? Because Julia Gillard is using this to, to claim that she's got a mandate to govern, that Labor is ahead on the two-party preferred vote. Is that likely to stay the same? Well... <laughs> The, the AEC, at much pressure from everybody, estimates two-party preferred votes in electorates where there aren't two-party preferred counts done on the night. I don't know the formulas they use to estimate their two-party preferred vote, but their figure that is published in that way at the moment includes about five electorates which aren't two-party counts. Um, uh, you know, if, if we really want to get very technical about it, we may have to wait for all those... Uh, counts to be recounted as two-party contests to be absolutely sure. Um, I so think what's, your, what's your two-party preferred count then? I don't have one. There oh, isn't right. one. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I mean, um, the Electoral Commission <coughs> estimates one, but I don't know the method they use to estimate it. Okay. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, Anthony, we'll leave it there. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you. Anthony Green, the ABC's election analyst. Michael Gleeson, what do you make of, of the movements or lack of movements today in the, in the vote? Well, look, what I can indicate is that I know that the ALP is very confident in Denison. And there's a certain amount of confidence with the ALP in Hasluck as well, although I think it would be a, a big call to say that you know, there's confidence there that, that the ALP will take it. I think on balance you'll see it'll be 73-73. Kerry, is that misplaced optimism in Hasluck? Um, no, I, I think we are fairly confident that we can win Hasluck as well, so I do think it's a bit misplaced at the moment. Uh, but I think it is tight. There's no doubt that it's tight. But, you know, it would be such a fabulous thing if um, the Liberal candidate got up. It would be a truly historic occasion to have mm. an the Aboriginal first Indigenous member. Yeah, absolutely. In the lower that would house. be fantastic. And the Liberal Party had the first Indigenous and member in the upper house Neville too. Bonham. That's yeah, right. so we're actually, you know, in spite of what people think, we're actually, you know, not as, uh, as anti-progression as people would like to suggest on occasion. I mean, no. it, would be, it would be fascinating, though, <clears throat> if Mr Crook pulls himself out and calls himself an independent, mm. and if you count the green in the Labor column, that does change the dynamic somewhat. Um, I don't I... think there's any sign he's going to call himself an independent. Um, Warren Trust this morning said he is going to sit in the National Party room. That's I it. think he's not planning to sit in the Coalition room. Um, but there, you know, I, I, I think we've seen what happened with the Nats in Western Australia. They decided when it push came to shove, they went with the Liberal Party to form government there. They're quite separate within that, but nevertheless, yeah. that's, well, when, that's, yet, that's who they chose. Well, Tony Crook did partners. say today, he did say that he could <coughs> vote with Labor if they dumped the mining tax. And, and, but right. that's unlikely, isn't it? <laughs> and let's not forget that today the National Party president has called for a split at a federal level of the coalition. So, you know, it's, it's interesting because some of the spin from coming from the coalition has been how, you know, they're the bastions of stability in the Labor Party. Look at what's going on there. Well, the reality is that one of their, the presidents of the National Party has suggested there be a split in the coalition. Kerry? Yes, except, of course, what they're doing is they're saying that we can continue to govern working together. I mean, they're I unlikely think that's to... structural reform, Yes, not exactly right. It's actually not about how we're going to come together to form a government. And yes. my understanding is that um, our friend in the West is certainly going to sit in the National Party party room. Um, he mightn't like the idea of being a coalitionist, but he certainly likes the idea of being in government with the Liberal Party, is my understanding. OK, so we're going to see the postal votes, the pre-poll votes counted, who's that likely to favour? Kerry? Well, you'd normally say it would favour a sitting member because there's a whole lot of um, name recognition that goes with a, particularly with a postal vote, you know, if you're, or, or an absentee vote, for example. I mean, I, I worked on the, uh, the town hall booth um, uh, on Saturday, went up to the interstate voting and everyone was there you know, handing out their how to votes, which listed all the, both the Liberal Party and the Labour Party, listed all the, people, all the electorates across the country. Um, but still, when you're going in there and you haven't really been at home for a while, you've got to kind of look at it and you go, oh, yeah, that's the guy I usually vote for. So you'd kind of figure it would, um, I would think, would but, favour but, a sitting know, member in most cases. I think, in a sense, to some extent, we're making it up, all of us, because mm -hmm. there isn't a pattern. I was sitting to a sitting member who had a safe seat for a long time. His postal votes last time, he'd shovel, shoveled them out, you know, as you do, mm -hmm. very, very conscientiously, and they came back exactly 50-50. Well, and also, <laughs> I suppose, in, in a seat like Hasluck, where there's been so much publicity about the candidate, and that is because he hopefully will be the first um, yes. Indigenous Member of Parliament. So there's been a, a whole lot of publicity which normally a new candidate wouldn't necessarily get. Mm. So I would hope 
fingers crossed, she says, that that will help us in Hasler. Well, so, Michael, just... you'd have to think in, in Denison with Andrew Wilkie, it's going to disadvantage him. Yeah, I was going to make that point, that certainly in the case of Andrew Wilkie, it has to be much harder for him. I mean, the reality is that, yes. that the party machine helps with yep. the postals, totally. and Andrew Wilkie doesn't have a party machine Well, except him. the sitting member isn't there anymore, though. It's not Duncan Kerr's name on that ballot paper either. Yeah. Well, but... I appreciate that, Fran, but the, the reality is the party gets behind the process, yeah. Yeah. and Andrew Wilkie doesn't have a party behind him. So... And certainly we've seen other, in, for example, in New South Wales on a previous occasion, we saw um, the independent in the seat of Willoughby was way ahead on the uh, on the night, and then because there were no postals, because mm. he didn't have a postal campaign mm. um, organised by like the Liberal Party did, he lost. Yeah. So I think certainly in the case of Wilkie, it's going to be a disadvantage to him. I mean, if you're a betting person now, Steve, you would say it's going to come down 73, 73, yeah. which is extraordinary. Yeah, and <laughs> if you to take that betting issue a bit further, centre bets odds on Labor forming a, forming a minority government narrowed significantly with the news that uh, Labor was ahead in Denison, went from two dollars twenty five to two dollars. Yeah, and that doesn't surprise me. I mean, the, the fact is that uh, I think since uh, since uh, polling closed on Sunday and since the, the, the telecast, I guess, finished on Sunday, um, the ALP has firmed, and they're firmed for that very reason. But, you know, I still think it's probably 50-50. I mean, OK, but even if it is 73-73, mm. the three country independents are saying they're interested in stable government. Mm. There is an argument, and certainly I think this is the argument the Coalition was putting, or will put, is that 73 plus the three country independents, a fairly natural fit with them, boom, there's stable government just in one fell swoop. Well, well that's stable government in the lower house, Fran, but if you look at who can get legislation through, I don't think there's any question that the Labor Party and the Green, with the help of the independents, is more likely to get legislation through the Parliament, given that the Greens are going to have the balance of power. We'll, we'll talk more about that issue in a while. Well, let's just hear from one of those country independents, uh, Rob Oakshot, because while the Coalition argues they deserve to govern on the basis of the primary vote, Labor says it's all about the two-party preferred vote, and one of those country independents, Rob Oakshot, says it's time the party stopped arguing the toss over who won the popular vote. I'm concerned by some of the Monday experts and the foot soldiers in, the, in both ranks who are, you know, analysing figures, whether it's majority seats, whether it's preference flows, and trying to put a spin on this thing that really doesn't matter. We're in a tricky situation. Everyone has to drop the political game for a minute, focus on the national outcome, focus on stable government. And if we do that and do it as a collective, we will engage Australia in the political process like it hasn't been engaged before. And I think that's the exciting opportunity from this challenge. Fran, do the parties have to be careful here? What they say in public and how they go about negotiating? They do have to be very careful and I think, you know, if you look around you, there's not a lot of them talking. They're pretty much leaving it in the camps of the leaders. Sure, the foot soldiers might be out through, you know, a few comments here or there in the papers, but there's not a lot of front benches on either side weighing into this. They're trying to keep their message simple, uh, to not muck it up. They're trying not to be seen to be putting too much pressure on the independents externally. They're trying to do it all in the negotiating room, I think. And it'll come